Kentucky. If you're thinking about going to General Assembly in Louisville or already starting to make your plans about going there, please contact me. I'd like to hear from you um, about what you're expecting to get out of General Assembly and, and maybe some different things that we can talk about when we're, when we're down there. On March 5th and going forward on the first Sundays of the month, I will host anyone new to First Christian Church or to the Disciples of Christ, um, anyone that has questions about who we are uh, and what we believe. Our conversations will be guided by the questions that you all bring into the conversation. We will have light snacks and drinks, and this will be um, a reception for, again, anyone who's sort of new to us and questions who the disciples are and what it is we do in the community. We will meet in the library after the sanctuary worship, so that'll be right around noon, again, on the first Sundays of the month. Our streaming service of Cafe Grace will begin soon, so uh, stay tuned and be sure to check that out. Thank you. Good morning. I have announcements for you Sunday morning, February 26th. The special collection for Week of Compassion continues today. Week of Compassion is the mission fund of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ for Global Relief and Development. Land here at Cafe Grace this morning. Glad to have you all here this morning. Pastor Kevin offers the courtesy to those of us who are involved in the weekly worship. Uh, some information as far as uh, reminding us of the scripture he's going to use and the and the theme and focus of his message. And he has the right, if he has an epiphany, had an epiphany this morning, to change it all. So I, I, you know, I don't hold him responsible that way. But based on what he shared with with me, uh, the overall theme of his message will be about forgiveness, if that's still the case. And even if even if it wasn't, it's still this is a good thing to talk about. We had a. Uh, uh, Elders and di deacons training at Camp Christian yesterday had 125, 140, whatever it was, a good turnout at the camp yesterday. Uh, and the elders and the deacons split, and we had uh, different sessions together. And forgiveness is one of the things that came up in the elders' session. I felt a little bit bad for the moderator because I don't really think he was able to get things completely covered that he wanted to because the conversation really uh, was... was uh, deep and enthusiastic about that. But forgiveness is a thing we struggle with. Let's face it. The passage today that Pastor Kevin has, has chosen, uh, 21 verses, and I, in the version I read, uh, there were six footnotes with cross-references, and then there were around 64 individual cross-references in those 21 verses. 20 of those 21 verses are Jesus' words. One verse is a question from Peter, and even Peter's one question had two cross-references involved with that. The point I'm making is, it's a very complicated, deep issue that we struggle with personally, and that scholars have struggled with trying to interpret everything and, and try to understand it as well. So, be forgiving to our pastor this morning. Don't hold him responsible for explaining it completely to us so we totally understand forgiveness at the end of his message, because it's a work in progress for all of us. And I just hope that we continue to work on that. Uh, people talk about forgiving and forgetting and all these types of things. There's just so much involved in, the, in forgiveness. But Jesus talked at length in several places about the importance of forgiveness and grace that we need to, to share with one another. So take this as another step in the, pro in the process of your life today as we listen to the message. I hope you focus on what he says and take it to heart and, and try to understand that God helps us all in these endeavors and uh, call upon him for the strength you need. So we pray a special blessing on our pastor this morning as he shares an important message and pray an important blessing on all of, all of us here today for spiritual understanding. Will you bow your heads with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this venue, this place where we can be together each and every week uh, to hear your word and to worship you and to, and to lift up the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And, wow, I mean, he, he tried to, so much to get through it to his, his followers and to all of us today, uh, the importance of grace and forgiveness and loving one another 
and it can be so challenging. So we pray that we can, can, can try our very best to, to hear your words today and, and to, to gain understanding and to be willing to even forgive ourselves. So many times we beat ourselves up. And uh, we need to understand that, that you love us enough to forgive us. We should forgive ourselves and forgive others as we would want to be forgiven. That almost a, kind of a little twist on the golden rule maybe, but, but we should forgive others as we would want them to forgive us. And we also know that you've said that uh, you will only forgive us if we forgive as well. So there's a lot to this. So be with us this morning as we, as we talk about this and listen, about, listen to this. And uh, as we come to the table, let us bring any burdens that we're carrying to that table today because we know that you took them upon yourself when you died on that cross. We pray these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. Yeah, I reminded me of words from one of my, uh, well, from one of the preachers I studied, Fred Craddock at Disciples Ministry. He said, it's better to preach um, one message over a full year than 52 different messages over the course of a year. And forgiveness is one of those topics, one of those themes that you can spend a full year talking about uh, for sure. There's a lot, a lot to forgiveness and a lot to the scripture. And forgiveness is a theme of the message today. I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 35. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and correct them when you are alone together. If they listen to you, then you've won over your brother or sister. But if they won't listen, take with you one or two others, so that every word may be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. But if they still won't pay attention, report it to the church. If they won't pay attention even to the church, treat them as you would a Gentile and tax collector. I assure you that whatever you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Again, I assure you that if two of you agree on earth about anything, and you ask, then my Father, who is in heaven, will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times but rather as many as 77 times, or seven times seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife and children and everything he had, and that the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him, and said, Please be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. The master had compassion on that servant, released him, and forgave the loan. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 coins. He grabbed him around the throat and said, Pay me back what you owe me. Then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, Be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he threw him into prison until he paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told their master all that happened. His master called the first servant and said, you wicked servant, I forgave all that debt because you appealed to me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for punishing prisoners until he had paid the whole debt. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or sister from your heart. 
Let us pray. Let your word, O God, break open our hearts this day through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may journey through the season of Lent, ready to meet Jesus as he is, not as we expect him to be. Amen. So the season of Lent has begun. Last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. So did any of you spend Tuesday scouring through your cupboards looking for sugary snacks? <laughs> On Fat Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday, again, did you hunt through your freezer looking for those delicacies that you forgot to serve at the Super Bowl party? Uh, <laughs> most of you, probably not. Culturally, we have moved on from the tradition of Fat Tuesday and giving up sweets for the season of Lent. Nobody does this anymore. There's, a, I think, a new societal thought that we have. I say I'm a Christian, and that's enough every other day of the year. Lent is no different. It's just days on a calendar, and I need to take care of myself. So let me remind you, Christians, this is the season of Lent. Being a Christian means having higher demands upon your life than the ink that dots your calendar the notes that you have jotted down in your planners, or whatever appointments Google Calendar is set to remind you of. We Christians have higher expectations upon us during the holy seasons of our faith. So during Lent, be intentional about thinking of the ways you are suffering. the ways you're falling short. Of the ways God calls you to act and be in this world, yet you fail in doing and saying the things that God wants you to. And also know this. God knows what it is like to suffer because God came. God came and met with people who were lame and destitute and the broken before God was tried, beaten, and executed. Be reminded that God does not abandon his followers. You are never alone. God will continue to guide, hold, and nurture you. God's love and mercy will pursue you every moment of your life, regardless of your lacking capacity to feel God's presence in all moments. Lent is not a time for us to be solemn in the church. It's quite the opposite. Sundays are the days that we come together as a community to celebrate how much God loves us through Jesus Christ. Here in this place of worship, at this time of praise for our God, we are building up a holy community. As one body, we listen for the word and open up ourselves to the movements of the Holy Spirit. The scripture we heard today tells us we are to form a community where we are all accountable to each other and forgiveness is extended. Churches are not perfect utopias. We are all familiar with pain, conflict, struggle, and disagreement. Kimberly Wagner writes that Matthew's text is refreshingly honest about the struggles that exist in living into a faithful community. There are many churches and people not in a church that are currently asking, can't we all just get along? Matthew's answer is no, but we have a plan for that. One person causes harm that leads to a separation. You are to treat that person with compassion and provide him or her with avenues to become reconciled 
back into the full community. Alfred North Whitehead once remarked that the only problem with Christians is that they do not follow Jesus. The faith communities that churches, that churches seek to forge are called to own up to the responsibility of taking care of the entire community as a whole and all of its members. If a member ever finds him or herself outside of the church community, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote that nothing can be more cruel than abandoning someone and denying someone a path back in. The path might have challenges of confession, evidence of repentance, restitution, or some form of tangible justice, and a demonstration of a changed heart. But the faithful are not to forget about God's people. A community is naturally going to protect its members, as that is something communities are all called to do. But there must also be an extension of care and hope of restoration for anyone that causes harm within the community. A wise preacher once informed me, if I'm getting this right, that forgiveness can only happen when whatever is causing the harm or separation no longer exists. This brings us to the parable Jesus shared with Peter. People who have received grace should extend it to others. At no point in this parable should we equate God as the king. This is a parable about a Gentile tyrant. God is loving and merciful. God forgives freely, abundantly, repeatedly, and unconditionally. It is easy to ask for forgiveness from God. God forgive me. It is challenging and difficult to go to your neighbor and ask for forgiveness. But again, we are accountable to each other. We must act in ways consistent with the faith that we proclaim. We are called to be in life together, which means being able to stay at this table that we are all invited to, even when times get hard. This season of Lent, we need to ask for forgiveness for not being more bold in our declaration of who we are and the things that our faith calls us to do. During the season of Lent, Let's be more intentional of building our relationship up with God. So what are you going to do during this season of Lent? How are you going to strengthen your relationship with God this season? You need to think and find something that will work for you. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Find something that works for you this season of Lent that will cause you to deepen your faith and strengthen your relationship with God. If you're not already doing so, commit to reading scripture daily or commit to commit to a daily devotional. There are there are so many different varieties. There's tons to choose from. Is the forms of books or also from electronic devotionals that you can have downloaded through apps on your smartphones. Another thought that I have is we're talking about Week of Compassion. Week of Compassion has a giving calendar. There's several options. You can find them online. Lent goes for six weeks. This is only a four-week exercise. <laughs> you get two weeks off, and I've given this to you a few days late. But anyways, um, this is a really cool thing just to have a devotion, a thought. For each day, just think whatever the thought is for that day. It doesn't take very long. So, Week of Compassion Partners provide shelter after disasters. Give one unit for every home you've ever lived in. Think back to all the different homes you've lived in. And 
put a check mark on the calendar, or put a star for how many you've been in, or if you've got a little box, you know, put a little chip in or whatever change, just count off. It doesn't have to all be pennies or quarters or dollar bills. Just put something in there for every home. And then at the end of this, you can have a contribution to give to Week of Compassion. I've done this exercise back when I was a young adult. And I tell you, I was so excited by the end of this. In week four, I was calling my pastor about what does this mean and stuff like that. And uh, I was really jazzed. I, I, these calendars always change. But later on in the week, it was like, count all the faucets in your home because fresh water is so important for people. And I've gone through this four-week process and thinking about all the work that Week of Compassion does across the world. I was so excited to count faucets in my little townhouse I was running at the time that I even caught the faucet at the bottom of my hot water tank to drain the water out. <laughs> There's a lot of good work that Week of Compassion does in these devotions it strengthens you. I mean, you can come to the book club if you want to do that. If you don't have time for a daily devotion, just try and meet up once a week with someone for coffee. Someone that does have time for devotion and ask them how it's going for them. If you can't work, or I'm sorry, if you do work and you cannot meet up in the mornings for a chat or get away in the afternoon, go out in the evening. Again, just once a week, meet up with somebody and ask them, what did you get out of your devotions this week? Be intentional about checking in with others about what their walk with Jesus looks like. Those of us who are engaging in study and devotion beyond Sunday mornings ought to crave sharing with others our raw experiences of growing deeper in our faith. If you're not able to talk about your own spiritual disciplines, talk about your life. There are people that are dealing with cancer. People are transitioning into retirement. People are moving into new homes or careers. Someone might be sick and dealing with caring for sick family members. Take time to follow up with people in your faith community. Pray for one another. Praying is a spiritual discipline, and praying will strengthen your relationship with God. It will also prepare you for the work that this church is going to engage in in our larger community. Many of us that have been connected to the church for years are not all that comfortable talking about our faith in public. Public speaking about our faith includes within our own walls here of the church. And we need to change that. We need to be motivated by the Holy Spirit to reflect on our faith and prepare ourselves to talk more openly about who we are. What does being a Christian mean to you? Your preparation begins in private. And if your relationship with God is strengthened, you will have something to share because it will be burning within your heart to break free from you for you to express. You won't be able to contain within you the good news of your walk with Jesus Christ. Very soon, we will be initiating programs to become community mentors. Not saviors to others, mentors. What do mentors do? They meet with people regularly, check in with them see how they're going, listen to their stories. Faithful Christians sharing will be faithful Christians to the sharing of our gifts and also mentors to be blessed by others who also have gifts to share with us. We just listen to them. Some of you may question, why are we doing this? And the answer is because 
we believe God tells us to love our neighbor. And this is how we express that love. There is a promise made by God at the beginning and the ending of Matthew's gospel. That we, and today, we read that promise in the middle. In the birth narrative of Jesus Christ, we are taught that the name, Emmanuel, means God with us. After the resurrection, and in the final verse of Matthew's gospel, it says, I am with you always. Today we heard chapter 18, where two or three are gathered in my day, I am there. When you speak and act, do so knowing that God is with you. Asking for forgiveness is hard, but it doesn't have to be. Every morning brings new challenges. An earthquake, a war, fires burning, floodwaters rising up and up. And so we pray every morning without ceasing. We lift up people in places who are suffering and we hold them in our hearts. But we do not stop there. We put our prayers into action through Week of Compassion, one blossom of love and justice and mercy at a time. For God's mercies are also new every morning. God's favor is not exhausted, nor has God's compassion ever failed. Week of Compassion is the Relief, Refugee, and Development Mission Fund of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out, Week of Compassion transforms suffering into hope. Ashes of despair, into blossoms of new and abundant life. Morning after morning. For over 75 years, Week of Compassion has been working with local partners all over the world to respond to disasters when they occur and to do the slow, beautiful work of ongoing development, strengthening communities one neighborhood, one family, one child of God at a time. Because of your generosity, women are learning to become beekeepers in Haiti, churches in Tornado Alley are rebuilding, Afghan refugees are being resettled, and Ukrainian families are finding long-term support. When the shadows fall, we lift our hearts in prayer. And then we rise up anew and get to work. We put our prayers into action. A vibrant rainbow of hope for a new future. Spreading the good news that God's mercies really are new every morning. Week of Compassion. Let's pray and act and give and rise up anew together. morning. In, in thinking about forgiveness, I was floating back to scriptural, um, the scriptural account of, of the Last Supper and as well as the time for the disciples after that Last Supper, after Jesus' crucifixion. And now we don't know what was talked about on Friday and Saturday. Jesus was hung on a cross, died, laid in a tomb before he was resurrected on Sunday. We don't know what was talked about, but there's no account of blame. It just occurred to me, there's no account of grumbling against Judas. 
Judas who betrayed Jesus. There's no account of uh, grumbling and complaining about uh, the Roman government and the Jewish leaders and all of the people who had something to do with with the crucifixion. And I, I don't know that it didn't happen. Maybe it just wasn't put into scripture for us. But what do we do whenever there's something that happens that we don't like? Aren't we looking for someone to blame? I, I think that we are hugely, even on an accident, you know, you can't be driving a reasonable speed with a reasonable distance between vehicles and slide on ice into somebody else with ha without having some blame cast, some judgment cast, some insurance company that has to determine who's at fault. And I think we've become a society of looking for blame and fault, which makes it even more difficult sometimes to forgive. And we also have a tendency, I think, to villainize to take a snapshot of someone's very worst moment and think that that's their character and that's who they are and to villainize. So while forgiveness is hugely important, I think we have to look at the front end of that. You know, if we could reduce our blame, if we could reduce the amount of times we villainize someone else or a group of people, then we don't even have to come to a place of forgiveness because we haven't entered into that anger and that blame and that villainization to begin with. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. And in fact, I will not eat of this bread or drink of this cup again until I do so with you in the kingdom of God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, I pray that you will help us to have grace and mercy from the outset, that we can reduce the amount of times that we blame someone, reduce the amount of times that we villainize someone. And where we have slipped up anyway, I pray that you will help us to forgive as Jesus forgave, as Jesus set the example of marvelous forgiveness. He said, forgive them for they do not know what they do. May we forgive as Jesus does. Amen. Come to the table and, and get your elements, and then we will take them together back at your seats. Jesus' body broken for you. Jesus' blood shed for you.
now is the time, uh, well, we always extend an invitation in Cafe Grace for individuals to um, share personal testimony or story. So I see we have someone who would like to share something. Please, by all means, from where you're at or come forward. like to say that if you don't forgive it's going to eat away with with you like a cancer for years there's four of us girls I'm the oldest and then three younger the oldest and the youngest were at odds with each other for years God has healed that and she has even come down from Michigan twice to be with me for a day. God has healed that relationship. But, you know, when we forgive, forgive someone, we've got the, also the other piece of the puzzle. We've got to be willing to ask for forgiveness if we've done something wrong or said something in the situation that caused this separation from us. Not only do we need to forgive them, we've got to be willing to ask for forgiveness. And I don't want to go to my grave without asking forgiveness for someone I should or to say that I was wrong. And, not, and also for not forgiving them. I hear on Dr. Phil different times, I'm not going to forgive that person. Jesus says, if you don't forgive, he won't forgive. And it's just like the Ten Commandments are not multiple choice, neither is the Bible. The Bible is not multiple choice. You don't pick and choose what you want. Thank you, Carol. I'm going to share a, a quick prayer from uh, Week of Compassion. Uh, are there any prayer requests we need to lift up this week? And just be mindful of what's in our church bulletins and the people that are there and the different struggles that people are dealing with. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, We ask you to help us to see our own actions this week as worship to you, O oh Lord. In little moves against destruction, in bold moves for life and beauty, in compassion and with compassion for ourselves and for others. Whether we are working, playing, learning, listening, or speaking, Lord, let us always be welcoming to others wherever it is we are and be with us and let us go. Let us worship you through our actions and may we all rise up anew. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Join me, if you will, in the benediction from Shane Claiborne. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our doors. Peace of Christ be with you. Amen.